hello everyone so my name is prashant and today i'm going to talk about the interrupt handling uh, using a daemon called irq balance uh, which is by default installed in our linux system so like in my previous video where i talk about the performance training we talk about like a memory uh, uh, we talk about a cpu we talk about the io uh, where there is a one aspect of performance training called interrupt uh, we might so this is one of the aspect I think which most of the people miss because IRQ uh, balance is a kind of a package which is by default on your Linux distribution. Uh, mostly I deal with the CentOS Fedora or the Red Hat and where it is installed and up and running by default, so nobody is even aware of it. But this is one of the aspect called interrupt request or IRQ or interrupt request which has been uh, we might need to look. So in some of the cases, the people are manually need to bind the interrupt to the specific CPU, which I don't think so is a good idea because uh, this IRQ band lens is doing their job like really well. So don't try to manually bind the interrupt to a specific CPU unless otherwise you have a like a very specific reason or very good reason or like a, uh, you will see like a lot of improvement after uh, binding a particular interrupt to a specific CPU or you have a, like a specific requirement where uh, binding an interrupt to a specific CPU will enhance your performance. So it's not always means it's never ever recommended to binding an interrupt to a specific CPU. But in this presentation, I will show you like how can you bind an interrupt to a specific CPU if you have a specific requirement. So before we are going to dig into like a lot of other things like how to bind it or what is IRQ balance to, let's look at some of the basic stuff like for example what is exactly an interrupt. So what is exactly an interrupt? So in the in the layman language or a simple term like you are doing some work and you are interrupted by someone so that is basically interrupt in the layman's term or in the computer languages like when your cpu is executing some task and you are interrupting a cpu that is what called uh, interrupt so it is means in the technical language it is called a signal originating from your hardware which is referred as a, a hard interrupt or a software called a soft interrupt that there is a work which need to be done right now so whenever an interrupt occur, it need to be uh, processed at the immediately. So since these kind of a things like interrupt which need to be handled when it occur, uh, there is the one CPU which need to be chosen on which uh, the executing code which uh, which execute or which uh, 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 which trigger that interrupt uh, need to be uh, processed or need to be choose. So. Like I mentioned, this like this interrupt need to be handled when it occurs. So our CPU need to be chosen on which the execute uh, on which uh, on which to execute the corresponding code. Okay. So uh, basically, interrupts are asynchronous in nature. So for example, if I am typing something in a keyboard, I can type at any moment. So there is a kind of an asynchronous interrupt. I mean, I am interrupting CPU that uh, there is something in my keyboard buffer which need to be processed immediately. So like I mentioned, I, it is a kind of an asynchronous notification from a device that a device making a notification need attention from the CPU that a CPU need to be assigned to it. So whenever any of the interrupt is raised, CPU uh, immediately suspend its operation, whatever it is executing, and call the register software to run, known as the corresponding interrupt handler. Okay. Generally, interrupt or IRQ interrupt request is mean. Uh, uh, identified by a numeral value called vector, which we are going to see when we are going to see the output of a proc, int proc slash interrupt. So generally, like a traditional NIC interface card or an IC card has only have a one interrupt. Uh, but like all the modern NIC uh, which, support, which are supporting MSI or MSIX have a multi queue, so that in that case they can uh, at least have a possibility to perform some kind of a parallel operation. So generally, there is only a one CPU. Uh, which is going to handle any of the interrupt. So uh, by single, so means assigned CPU, uh, single IRQ is handled by a single uh, CPU attack. So if at the same moment, if you're going to assign any other uh, IRQ, it is not going to service. And generally an interrupt is being handled by a single CPU. Um, this will increase the chance of their cache it. As well as if uh, you are going to move the specific interrupt to some other CPU, it is it will going to cause a lot of your performance hit. So generally because of this cache hit and all these things, generally the interrupt will be handled by a single CPU and it will not always be recommended that uh, that the IRQ will move keep on moving between one CPU to another. Uh, one of the most important thing is like from the 
design point of respect, uh, prospect that the IRQ handlers are to be written as small as possible because as I mentioned if some IRQ is being processed or is being uh, processed by a particular CPU uh, that particular CPU is being blocked so uh, this is going to block the high level execution of code so that's why this IRQ handle are written as small as, as small as well as as fast as possible so since this is going to create a lot of issue because if any particular CPU is executing any of the interrupt it is not going to service any of the requests at particular moment of time so to overcome this kind of a problem uh, IRQ handlers often schedule these work to perform at later stage which is known as a soft IRQ or soft interrupts okay so this is just a little bit introduction to interrupts we have a soft interrupt and hard interrupt the interrupt is generated by a hardware is called hard interrupt and which is generated by a soft interrupt and by a software is called the soft interrupt um, there are other things called exception and all those things but I'm not going to cover those things in this video so uh, like I mentioned we have this presentation about the IRQ balance so the main advantage of using a IRQ balance is to distribute your interrupt dynamically and efficiently and automatically among the available CPU so for example uh, you have a two network interface card and one of the card which has been highly loaded and there is one network card which is being less loaded and at the same time if any request comes so uh, if you are doing all these things manually uh, what you are going to do like you are going to uh, assign the network interface card which has been less loaded to perform your task uh, but let's say for a moment that the entire thing will be reversed and now the um, network interface card which has been less loaded has been loaded with the most of the load and the one which has been heavily loaded is not having any load anymore so means IRQ balance keep on monitoring all this stuff and instead of performing all these tasks manually uh, IRQ balance will take care of all those things so that's why it is said that don't manually uh, bind interrupt to a particular CPU IRQ balance is doing its tasks like really well to automatically balancing all these interrupts among the available CPU and this will lead to your better performance as well as the power saving and it constantly review the loads uh, applied by IRQ and rebalance it accordingly, accordingly uh, after every 10 seconds you can override all these things but generally people don't touch all these parameters I am going to show you one of the parameters through which you can uh, uh, change this behavior and like I mentioned because uh, to, uh, this will help us to get the cache hit, uh, cache hit. Uh, means, uh, this is one of the major work of IRQ balance for example if the particular IRQ is being handled by a particular CPU so let's say CPU 0 so next step when the interrupt occur it might must be handled by the CPU 0 to get the better level of cache hitting okay sorry so let's look at some of the practical stuff so by default you have this RPM store in your system called IRQ balance okay and my system yeah this is IRQ balance okay and I think I'll stop the service so let's start it and now it's up and running okay so this is primarily uh, our main daemon and if you need to debug it just stop it okay stop it and then run python hyphen debug okay it will give you a platter of information okay okay now let's look at the important configuration file so like i mentioned by default it is going to distribute your interrupt after every 10 seconds okay but there is a parameter called one shot by default it is being disabled but if you enable it equal to yes so means when you reboot your system or when you start your IRQ, IRQ balance it wait for a minute it is going to uh, balance your interrupt and after that it exit it don't change it again so that's why I mentioned like you can override this parameter then you have a something called parameter called IRQ affinity mask which is like a 64 bit mask uh, if you set it to 1 that means enabled 0 means disabled so what it does is like you can enable 
uh, if you want a specific CPU or a set of CPU where IRQ balance is going to uh, mask or balance your interrupt like after every 10 seconds. So if you want like a, for example if you have a, a 3 CPU, CPU 1, 2, 3 and you only want CPU 1 and 3 in which IRQ balance is going to mask your interrupt or balance your interrupt, you can do it. I'm going to show you how you can do it, that how you can change because I said that it's only going to accept the 64 bit mask or the hexadecimal mask, how you can do it. There is one more parameter which has been not been shown here. So if you're going to do man IRQ balance, that's called IRQ band CPU. So in a similar manner, if you want, there are some CPU uh, which has been which has been completely been ignored by the IRQ balance daemon, you can also do it. And no interrupt is going to assign to this CPU. Okay. So this is something. Now this is the this is how you can see like uh, how many interrupt each CPU is handling and or, yeah, or you can say how often a specific interrupt been handled by a specific CPU. So like in this in my this system we have a three CPU CPU 0, 1 and 2 and uh, this is the IRQ number which we are talking so far and this is a device name okay and how many number of times this specific interrupt happened on the cpu which is a time interrupt which is a default interrupt with having irp number zero and for your network interface card for example this interrupt number so this is the way okay and then we have one other important file called box stacks so there in the first line uh, first column you have a cpu number and this is a cumulative sum of aggregate of all the CPU okay uh, the important one is the seventh column so one two three four five six seven the seventh column is the time spent in servicing this particular interrupt how much time it's spent which is a hundredth of a second and similar way the uh, time spent in servicing the soft IRQ then we have this line uh, shows all interrupt occur uh, since the system boot so total number of interrupt which has been occurred so far which has been shown by here okay. okay so like i mentioned it is not a good idea to manually bound interrupt to a specific cpu but if you have uh, some cases where you want to bind uh, uh, your interrupt to a particular cpu so uh, means by default your kernel uh, will look at this location so to determine which cpu uh, means this particular uh, interrupt has been occurred kernel will execute a given interrupt handle um, and it look for the, some specific file so for like i show you the output of this so these are the number of these are the irqs and for this kernel look inside this much so for 0 1 8 9 this is this. and we have a interface to do so like i mentioned and for example this smp affinity file for example let's look for eth2 this eth2 has been handled by irq number 19 and we have SMP affinity which is set to 2. Okay, so now we have a bit set, means which set like I mentioned earlier, bit set 1 uh, means the uh, interrupt is allowed to be handled, and bit set 0 means interrupt not to be, means uh, uh, not allowed. So uh, this file SMP affinity. Uh, basically being uh, uh, means accepting the hexadecimal value and depending upon the interrupt number so let's say let's look at here cpu info so i have three cpu here uh, cpu 0 cpu 1 and cpu 2 okay so 0 1 2 and 3 cpu and this is a CPU ID 0 for 
that corresponding decimal value is 1 for CPU ID 1 2 raised to the power 0 equal to 1 2 raised to the power 1 equal to 2 2 raised to the power 2 equal to 4 and so on so if I need to convert this decimal value to a hexadecimal value I have this simple mathematical formula so let's say let's go back to our clock interrupt output this ETH I always want this ETH will be handled by the uh, let's say CPU 0 okay and this is running on IRQ 19 like we showed earlier okay so uh, I okay and like I mentioned 2 is to power 0 equal to 1 okay so this is how I'm converting uh, this decimal value to hexadecimal value so this formula multiply by 2 is to power 0 if I want this uh, interrupt to be handled by CPU 1 and 2 is to power 1 equal to 2 so here I am doing it 1 now 0 prop IRQ IRQ number so like here IRQ number is 90 and SMP append. okay once you do it just get that file okay it's one now run this command grab okay eth2 prop interrupts so here if you can see that now all the interrupt can handled by the cpu 0 not by cpu 1 not by cpu 2 so i'm just means i just demo you like how you can bind the interrupt to a particular CPU uh, but I can, like I mentioned earlier it is not a good idea unless you have a strong reason to bind a interrupt to a specific CPU so always rely on this service which is uh, going to automatically be going to uh, distribute your interrupt to a specific CPU okay uh, I think some issue is there Okay, let's remove it. Okay, we say UX grab iPhone I IRQ. No IRQ, this is a soft interrupt. Case of IRQ. And IRQ balance start. So IRQ balance is doing its job properly. Whenever you're going to restart it, whatever you have set, like you have manually set the value, is going to be overwritten. So here so now it's not only been handled by your uh, cpu 0 so let's run that watch command again so now it's handled by cpu 1 so it's depend upon your IL equivalent service to see like it's build the cpu topology and see like which is which one is uh, less loaded and going to schedule the interrupt to that particular cpu so this is just a little bit introduction about how interrupts work how you can manually bind it what is the use of irq balance um, use of files like proc interrupt and the proc stats so thanks for watching this video in case if you have any query and question just write it to me at lapreshant at gmail.com thanks once again